Ladies and gentlemen, Cindy Freeman. Hello. 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 Ah, God, this is very good. Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> so, um, when it comes to like role models, Wonder Woman is my all-time go-to role model. Um, that is not what I'm going to talk about right now. I'm going to talk about I. I um, I once had the honor of meeting a real, is this, was that me? Uh, meeting one of my real all-time uh, favorite feminist role models um, in person. Have you ever met somebody you admired in person? Um, my goodness, this woman, she had a vision of creating uh, an island of all women sort of like Wonder Woman's Paradise Island. Um, the role model had done all of this work. Uh, she was an artist and an activist and done all of this work in uh, war-torn areas of uh, Bosnia, Africa, and she had seen so many women um, just really destroyed in the chaos of war that she had decided what, what the world needed was a safe haven for these women. Um, and she was going to create it, and it was going to be on a private island where women from all over the world would help women, and they would be in, in encouraged and heal and self-actualize on her own private island, no men allowed. Now when we think an island of all men, we don't think health and healing, we think Rikers. <laughs> we think Alcatraz. We don't think, we don't think uh, empowerment, uh, just saying. Um, but the night I met her, um, my God, it felt like I had, it was at one of those points in your life where it's, you know, I had just worked so hard on my artwork and I just felt I had conjured this meeting out of my sheer will. Um, I had just gotten back to Boston where I was living after taking one of my solo shows uh, on tour in Europe. Um, back in Boston, I had developed like this the relationship with these group of girls. Um, we had a comedy troupe called Planet Girl, All Women. And I felt like I'd finally become an artist that had a platform to say stuff I was really proud of. I was in a really great space and um, I had a Broadway producer talking about taking my newest show um, to New York and it was he who introduced me. He's like, she has got to meet you. I mean, you you, you guys are soulmates. I mean, she, the work that you're doing, this feminist work, you know, you're, you, God, I, you know, there's a dinner in her honor when she comes through Boston doing a lecture tour and um, you're going to be my date. And I was so excited because to me it was like what I would do to have a woman like this as a mentor. Um, because one of my pet peeves for a billion years was that I could never find a good mentor. And most of my guy friends had them. You know, it's usually a college professor, but somebody who had stayed in their life, somebody who met them when they were young and was like, you know, kid, I like your style. And uh, I'm going to show you the ropes and then you and I, we're going to go to bars and we're going to hit on hot chicks. And for women, I just felt that this really didn't exist in our culture. And most of the mentors that I could have possibly had were men, and sexual tension just always managed to somehow ruin it. So what I knew I needed was a female mentor, I mean, a straight female mentor, who would take me under her maternal wing and say, I like your style, and you and I, I'm going to show you the ropes, and then we're going to go to bars and hit on hot guys. And that was my dream when I met this woman. I figured I would tell her about the comedy troupe Planet Girl and our signature performance piece, which was this um, song and dance called The Vagina Dentata. Where we would wear these giant foam rubber twats with teeth. And we would dance and sing and go, how could something so delicious turn out to be so vicious? Vagina, da 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 da. And everybody would sing along. It was amazing. Anyhow, I figured she would hear about this and she'd be like, oh, that is brilliant. I'm going to have to book you women to be part of my next big women's issues thing or something like that. And so when I was getting, I was so excited, you know, and I knew I needed to dress to impress her. It was the 90s and body image was the big hot button and she was on this, you know, you know, bandwagon. So I called all the girls from Planet Girl and discussed it. My mom was the one who took me shopping. I ended up, and it was a black velvet dress just to the knee with uh, high boots and bell sleeves. And, you know, I felt, I, I, you know, as sexy but classy. And we get to this restaurant, and there's only about 10 of us. It's mostly wealthy philanthropists and friends of the arts. And my Broadway producer friend introduces us. This is Cindy, and the two of you have so much in common. She produces feminist theater right here in Boston. And, and you know, we're taking her show to New York. And she's like, oh, best of luck with you. And that's, that's absolutely wonderful. And so we sit down, and we all begin to talk. And uh, she immediately starts talking about issues with funding her art projects. 
And my God, to me, this is like really refreshing that somebody with a career as hot as this woman and as famous as her and I share the same issue, which is funding our art projects. We are, we are soulmates. And so I joined the conversation from the, you know, the position of the emerging artist. And she turns to me and says, and what do you want out of life? You want to be famous like me? And everybody at the table is now staring at me. And I, I say, no, I just would like to be at a point where I don't have to work four sucky day jobs in order to produce a show. And she says, because you want to know when I was happiest? I was happiest when I had a teaching job at NYU. And nobody knew who I was. And I could sit in a coffee shop and write, and nobody would bother me. And I'm thinking, you know, a cushy writing job at NYU would be less humiliating than cocktail waitressing at the rack. Um, billiards hall. The joke was you had to have a rack to work at the rack. And she says, do you know what your problem is? And up until now, I thought the problem was I didn't have a mentor. And I say no. And she goes, patience. You need to learn patience. Do you have any idea how many years it took me to get where I am? Then yeah. How much hard way? How old are you anyway? And I didn't know why that mattered. And I said, 37. And she blanched and shut up. <laughs> Oh, evidently she thought she was berating somebody much younger. <laughs> and then I just like went, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute. This was a woman I have read, I have read articles that she has written on the importance of empowering young girls and, and, and don't shame young women for sounding smart. And as I'm reeling in the, the computer, what did you just do to me? She launches out on this whole diatribe about her island of all women, where there's going to be health and healing healing and safety, and I'm thinking, and who's going to be there on that island to protect the women from you? <laughs> I got a cab ride home, and the cab driver, he was like this older guy, uh, maybe mid-60s, graying temples, um, thick West Indian accent, and I get in the cab, and he says, you know, so where are you coming from all dressed up on a Thursday night, pretty lady? And I'm like, oh God, I have just been to the most annoying dinner of my life. And he says, ha, that sounds like a good story you tell. <laughs> and, you know, so I, I told him. And he was really sweet. He started laughing. And then he started asking questions. And he really listened in this way that nobody at that dinner listened. He was like, what's wrong with your friend? Your friend did not defend you. You have bad friend. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Probably <laughs> you had been there. But when I got home, I felt, I felt much better. I felt more myself. And I mean, at the end of it, it's like, it wasn't a total loss. You know, the goal for me that night had been to make an important connection. And I did with the cab driver. Um, <laughs> By the time the night was over, I realized like this desire that I had for this mentor um, was probably something I had already outgrown at this stage of my life, and that uh, was probably just a naive dream from when I was younger that it was time to let go of her, as the cab driver actually said to me. He was like, you want my advice? I give you advice. You grown lady, you give yourself advice. That's my advice, which is really good advice. And I decided, all right, if I really want a role model, I'm, I'm better off sticking with Wonder Woman, my fictitious one. Because real role models are people, and people can always disappoint you. And fictitious role models, they live in your psyche. They show up when you need them. And they always know what to say. And I, <laughs> I told the cab driver about the island of all women. <laughs> and he said, ha, that would never work. <laughs> island of all women as island that all the men will swim to. <laughs> Thank you. Sydney Freeman, everyone.